Welcome to our CME on the value of artificial intelligence in detection of pulmonary embolism. Our practice has been using a screening algorithm for PE since 2018. We use these algorithms for triage to expedite positive cases to the top of the reading lists in a blinded process. Finalized reports are then checked by natural language processing to determine whether the dictated diagnosis matches the AI finding. If a negative radiologist report is identified on a positive AI case, the case is flagged and reviewed by a third radiologist, either same shift or next day. The following are cases of PEs picked up by AI but missed on the initial read. 66-year-old male with history of DVT on anticoagulants and leukemia in remission, presenting with shortness of breath and fatigue over the past few weeks, as well as exposure to COVID. Watch the cine loop and look for the embolus or emboli. We see here a dominant three centimeter mass like opacity in the right lower lobe superior segment right here. We see multiple small segmental emboli in the right upper, middle, and lower lobes. Look again at the movie and correlate with the screen captures. On lung windows, we see the patient has multiple areas of ground glass and nodular opacities, relatively classic now for COVID, but also with a wide differential. This case is a 51-year-old male on ventilator who pulled out his dialysis catheter. This case had suboptimal bolus timing, however, the pulmonary artery density was adequate. Not shown as a large low density fluid collection in the right arm where the catheter was pulled out. There are a few small pulmonary emboli saddling the right lower lobe posterior and lateral segments. On the sagittal movie is a very nice vascular cutoff sign caught in the screenshot on the right. We believe this emphasis on searching for a vascular injury was a likely distractor. Next is a 32-year-old female with a history of PE and DVT on Coumadin, presenting with lumbar pain as well as intermittent mid-sternal chest pain for a few days. The incidence rate for positive pulmonary embolus ranges from 10 to 40 percent with higher rates in high-risk patients. Up to half of these can have associated DVT. Despite the pretest probability noted as high, these small emboli were missed, but picked up by the AI algorithm. There is a subtle PE adjacent to the hilum, and another one seen straddling the segmental branch point. These emboli are more conspicuous on the sagittals than the axials. Our practice receives roughly 32,000 chest cases per month, so a conservative estimate is approximately 75 to 100 positive cases every day. This is a 54-year-old male presenting with shortness of breath, tachycardia, hypoxia, and a recent positive COVID test. Even on soft tissue windows, we can appreciate the extensive disease in the right lung. When we scroll through again, we see the extensive branching but non-occlusive embolus extending into the multiple segments in the left lower lobe. Right there. Here, lung windows reveal extensive bilateral ground glass and interstitial disease, and it's easy to get bogged down in lung disease differentials and forget to look at the vessels. Again, on the sagittal series, long branching embolus coming in right here. Next is a 75-year-old female with right upper back and abdominal pain and chest pressure. She had undergone a recent biopsy procedure to her right upper abdomen. We can see why right here. There are also some moderate emboli in the right lower lobe. The study was a combined chest, abdomen, and pelvis with the bulk of the dictation, of course, discussing the liver findings. In the abdominal images, we see the central hepatic mass as well as some satellite masses, which was later determined to be a cholangiocarcinoma, as well as the adjacent ascites. In the coronal series, we see ascites over the liver dome, the central hepatic mass with irregular margins, 
and the bilateral segmental emboli first on the left and then the right lower lobe. And as we know, cancer is a significant risk factor for thrombotic disease. Many studies report significant follow-on consequences of finding incidental PE, and treatment protocols do not differ significantly between high-risk patients that have symptoms or that don't have symptoms. Next is a 50-year-old man with COPD, tachycardia, and hypoxemia, and unspecified abdominal pain. Among windows, there were patchy areas of ground glass disease compatible with acute COVID-19 process, which could certainly explain the clinical symptoms, as well as this large central embolus. In the coronal series, there is moderate streak and motion artifact, and the bolus timing is suboptimal. If these aren't windowed correctly, the difference between clod and lung or soft tissue density structures, the embolus can be missed. This case is in the 80-year-old female with respiratory arrest, now on ventilator. There is extensive debris in the esophagus, which could represent ongoing reflux disease or distal esophageal obstruction, possibly causing an aspiration event that led to the arrest. We see a small defect. Right lower lobe also demonstrates atelectasis versus aspiration. Again, we have significant distractors here. There is a massive amount of material in the esophagus, right lower lobe airspace disease, mild effusion, cardiomegaly, and moderate abdominal ascites. Clotfeld artery and atelectatic lung can be difficult to differentiate. This coronal series also shows the subtle nature of these. And again, AI is a good backup here because we have all missed these. Multiple subsegmental pulmonary emboli are present in the right lower lobe. Here is an 84 year old female with left chest wall pain. Axial series shows mild cardiomegaly, small bilateral effusions, and some irregular subpleural thickening or atelectasis. Viewing the loop, we initially note a heterogeneous thyroid, right or below granuloma, and as we slow down at the side of emboli, we see the small filling defects in the lingula and the left lower lobe. On the coronal series, the vascular cutoff sign is noted. Posteriorly, we can appreciate the effusion and subpleural atelectasis. To train our algorithms, our radiologists will flag cases for our teaching file and circle the pulmonary emboli for the programmers. Next case is an 86-year-old with dyspnea on a ventilator. Even windowed for the pulmonary artery, we can see significant bilateral lung disease and a TAVR coming in right there. We see here a small, nearly occluding anterior right upper lobe embolus, diffuse lung disease, bibasal atelectasis, and pleural effusions. Lung windows demonstrate the now classic appearance for COVID, which again is a major distractor. However, roughly a quarter of hospitalized patients with a PCR confirmed diagnosis of COVID have CT evidence of pulmonary emboli. Sagittal series shows this to be an occlusive clot, and again emphasizing the importance of scrutinizing all the different planes or series projections as some definitely are more conspicuous than others. Next case is an 81-year-old female with pain and cough on breathing. We can appreciate a dilated debris-filled esophagus as well as bilateral lung disease. Of course, she's coughing. Here's the action movie with the previous emboli in the right middle lobe and the anterior basal segment of the right lower lobe.
coronal series nicely demonstrates this separate emboli. Lung windows also demonstrated areas of bronchiectasis and bilateral chronic lung disease. Similarly, sagittal images again nicely demonstrate the emboli in the right, middle, and lower lobes. This case is a 76 year old female with shortness of breath. She has a large posterior hernia on the left and elevation of the right hemidiaphragm. Axial cine again shows the moderate right upper lobe lobar and segmental embolus and the left sided hernia containing the stomach. On the coronal series, we see the elevated right hemidiaphragm and the embolus straddling the apical and anterior segmental arteries. On the sagittal series, we can again clearly see the embolus. These other projections are extremely valuable in confirming presence of PE. This next case is a 56 year old male with elevated D dimer. There are some significant subtle scanner artifacts in the vessels manifested by these areas of linear alternating low density. Right there, right there. We see two rounded areas of low density in the median lateral segmental arteries. And when we slow the scroll rate, we can see the confusing linear artifacts as well as the more rounded filling defects more discreetly, but it's easy to blow these off as artifacts as well. Using point localization, the actual filling defect is visualized as a discrete central arterial defect on the coronal series. And on the sagittal series, we again see both feeling defects as more rounded and larger, definitely different from that of the more linear artifacts from the scanner. Here's a 57 year old female, also with shortness of breath. See the small filling defects. Again, the bilateral emboli, first in the left lower lobe, followed by the right middle and right lower lobe. These are non including proximal emboli. And again, a major distractor is diffuse ground glass lung disease, a injury pattern worse in the upper lobes that we now most commonly associate with COVID lung disease. Only defects in the left lower lobe on these coronal images may be between the vessels. A sagittal series uh, was not given, but likely would have answered the question. Always look for more emboli. Here's an 82 year old male with known trauma, a fall with multiple rib fractures. You can see the rib fractures coming in here on the left. And it's easy to miss this small contralateral right upper lobe filling defect when you are distracted by the effusion, you're looking for pneumothorax and trying to count all the rib fractures. Sagittal images show this small embolus just curling around the apical and posterior segmental branch. The linear hypodensity below the main artery is likely a chain of lymph nodes. Next is a 64 year old female with a history of lung cancer, METs to the lung and liver and dyspnea on exertion. See that little tiny defect, but however, multiple distractors are present, retroperitoneal fullness, ascites, generalized cachexia, COPD on lung windows, and granulomatous disease. Sagittal series demonstrates the linear branching of the embolus extending into the superior and inferior lingular segments. Next is a 68 year old male with complaints of chest pain and a history of recent right shoulder fracture with surgery pending. We can appreciate the right proximal humeral fracture with subtle clot along the posterior segmental branches. The clot is better appreciated on this. This coronal series. And similarly on the sagittal series, the embolus is nicely demonstrated. This is a 60 year old female 
with end-stage renal disease and a history of pulmonary embolus, but not on anticoagulants. The peripheral subsegmental clot is subtle because our attention is immediately drawn to the large bilateral pleural effusions and accompanying atelectasis. The sagittal series demonstrates bilateral pleural effusions and the single small central intervascular subsegmental clot. Detection of incidental pulmonary emboli is not a trivial event. Multiple studies have shown a significant number of patients have recurrent emboli, pulmonary hypertension, and sudden death events after detection of IPE. In high-risk patients, such as those who have cancer or COVID, there is no difference in treatment between symptomatic or asymptomatic patients, especially above the subsegmental level. Our practice has internally established the value of AI for triage and in detection of initially missed pulmonary emboli. However, positively flagged studies with an initial negative report require third-party human correlation. Our experience has also shown the bulk of these cases typically have significant pathologic distractors that contribute to these types of errors. The detection of small pulmonary emboli has been rising significantly over the last decade due to improvements in technology and scanning protocols, and this results in very thin slice thicknesses in the images now being submitted. AI is increasingly being utilized in multiple areas, including triage and emergency diagnosis, but the algorithms can be manipulated to enhance sensitivity or specificity depending on these use cases. When reading the research, look carefully at how the pulmonary emboli are defined. Here are a few references that uh, may help to look up some of this data. Thanks for your attention and participation in our program.